Sullivan. Hey, Karen Sullivan here at Life Health More on Facebook. And I'm really glad that you're joining me either live or replay. And as I have explained before, I will comment um, back. And if you have questions, please make them in the comments below. But I can't see what the comments are with the way my computer is set up. So I won't be able to respond to you in live time, but I will always get back to you. You can always send me a private message too on Facebook. And let's see, the other thing is, oh, the greatest thing is that you can be on my email list. And my email list is um, all the way over on the left of the page. You see about underneath my picture. And the next thing is email. And if you sign up for email, then I will send you the tutorials that I have that lead you into building a better relationship with knowledge base that will help you to make proper decisions about what you're doing with fitness and exercise and how you think about things and nutrition and food and all of those things that come as a part of the fitness package. As I mentioned in March, we talked about holistic wellness and that's what we're shooting for. The month of April, I'm talking about exercise and we did chest on Monday. Today's Thursday and we're talking about our back. Okay. I have here the copy, one of the copies of my book, the Zen of weight loss that is available on Amazon. And you see, it's got a little bit different cover from the other one. The other one was a beach scene with a lot of blue and this is still beach, but it's got more greens and blues in it. And so same book, different cover, but anybody that really remember this, if you have purchased the book, or in some means uh, came to one of my events and got the book as a gift from me, you are entitled, all of you, to a free coaching session, one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So please contact me, send me a private message on Life Health More, and then I'll be able to connect you and uh, catch up and we'll talk, we'll do our thing, okay? So let's see, exercise. You know, we kind of have, there's a stigma attached to it. Uh, a lot of people just can't even think about it. A lot of people can think about nothing but exercise. And today we're going to talk about the back and um, sort of, it's an area of the body that's often neglected. It reminds me of a story when I was in college and was at the beach with friends and we were walking down the beach and hanging and you know as we usually do when uh and it was Rehoboth Beach Delaware great beach and I met a guy that I had never met before and he was sitting in a chair or you know laying on a blanket and always and tanning the front of his body all the time and I said to him one day don't you ever turn over so that you can get your back tan and he said, well, I figure my back gets tan enough as I'm walking down the beach because the sun shines on both sides. And he said, besides, how often do you walk backwards up to somebody? I'm <laughs> like, okie dokie, you know. But I think that that sometimes is the same feeling that people get about working their backs. Why do I need to work my back? I mean, how often do I walk up to people while I'm facing away from them, right? Do a little moonwalk up to see somebody? Yes, but there is so much more to the back. And so we're going to talk about those muscles, okay? Now, the back, it it is uh, connected to the back. The muscles are all connected to the spine and the skeletal system. And it's what holds our body together. It holds us upright. It allows movement in the arms. It's not just the shoulders that are doing. There are back muscles that are working with that. The arms that allows your head to move, okay? Shoulders, movement of the ribs, even the ribs, ribs to expand the ribs when you're breathing. And so that's the lungs are expanding and the diaphragm is coming down and the back muscles help to move those ribs out so that we can do that. Did you have any idea? It's a really, really important part of our anatomy. Now, remember, there are lots of muscles and we don't want to have any of them be weaker than the others because when one part of the body is weaker than the other, the other part tries to compensate and that's sometimes when you get strains and sprains. 
we'll talk about that in a little bit too. So the muscles are, the primary muscles are the erector spinae. Now the erector spinae are the ones that run um, up, if this is the spine, they run on either side of the spine all the way up the back. And I know that in men that have lifted very heavy, done a lot of heavy deadlifts and, um, and squats and those sorts of things, they can have them developed really big so they're almost they look like cable like but you know you can overdevelop your erector spinae um i used to date a guy way before my husband and uh he was a power lifter and he had just this incredible back with these huge erector spinae and he lifted i don't know what his weights were but he lifted heavy and he was like uh, virginia state champion one year you know, in a 220 pound weight class. So he had these big muscles running down his back. He also had a lot of pain in his back. And I remember one day he came home from uh, the doctor's office and it turned out he had two ruptured discs in his back. And he was like, well, I don't understand. And the doctor said, it's probably your erectors are overdeveloped and it caused pressure and caused those those eventually over time not it wasn't an instantaneous thing but it was over time and i know he dealt with back aches for a while before he finally broke down and went to the doctor now that's an extreme okay that's somebody who is doing competitive power lifting and and all the practice that goes up and um and lifting that leads up to events that's a lot of lifting. So the, the common man is not going to have that problem, but you have to remember everything in balance. Okay. So the erectors hold us upright, hence the name, the rhomboids, rhomboids um, go, their insertion point is in the scapula and they, the origination is um, attached to the vertebrae. Now it's high in the back kind of underneath the shoulder blades okay and it attaches to the shoulder blades and so let's see you know i wish i had a diagram i wish i had i should have brought something to tell you but okay so if you have the back let's backtrack a little bit yet everybody knows the latissimus dorsi right the lats and that's what gives the back the v shape especially in men they like to develop those lats and these are your shoulders this is your head okay so the lats go down like this. The erector spinae run up the middle of the back. And then you have the trapezius muscles that are at the top of the head. And there's actually um, the higher, the mid, and the lower trap muscles. And they do end up going down into a, kind of a V between your shoulder blades. Now, underneath those is where the rhomboid muscles are, okay? And working those... Uh, I do an exercise that I call lawn mowers where you're activating and pulling that scapula back that will get that rhomboid to work a little bit more. Rhomboids help to keep those shoulder blades pulled down, the, keeps your shoulders back, helps you to keep be erect, okay? The top part, the tra um, traps that goes up into the neck that helps with being able to swivel and turn your head, looking down, looking up, and they're the ones for me that I often have the biggest problem with um, that they get stiff and sore. Okay. So let's see. And then the teres major. Okay. Which is also in, in the back. Okay. Now the teres major kind of is, I, I think I've heard it talk called like the little lat, you know, it's underneath the big heavy lats that come up like this and it's underneath uh, attaches to the scapula goes out, I believe to the humerus. I believe okay so those muscles are all working together to help you to move okay so keeping balance you have to remember to keep balance in working the back and the chest needs to be as strong as the back is um, one of the things that I recognized when I used to work with um, the swim team in Virginia that my swimmers more often you would think that they would have really strong chests from swimming while well, their backs were very very strong and the first assessment i would do with them was to check and look at their shoulder blades and what i noticed all the time was their shoulders were a little rounded like this but more importantly their shoulder blades stuck out like wings and you'll see that on children 
too. Very young children. We're talking two years old, three years old, little guys. You know, once their chubbiness goes away, you can see where these shoulder blades stick out. And that's just development that needs to happen over time with or without a sport. And it will happen because it's just the pulling sort of a thing, a child pulling a wagon, um, a child, you know, playing um, tug of war with a dog, with a young dog, you know, uh, just those sorts of mo motions, um, pulling themselves up into a, a swing set or up to go, let's see, I'm going to walk up the um, slide, you know, that pulling action that helps with the children. But a swimmer who has overdeveloped chest from swimming will have these rhomboids that stick out. So we always had to emphasize, let's do the work in the back to strengthen it, even it out, try to keep the shoulders healthy. And that balance of power gave them strength so they could, sw they could swim faster. Okay. Now, I think that we need to address some of the things that we do um, just in the course of our lives that can really hurt our backs. One is um, certainly, let's start with the easy things, okay? Um, sleeping on your side. And I know it's hard and everybody, because I do it and I battle it constantly, but sleeping on your side causes that your head goes down, the spine's not straight, it puts strain on the neck, it's strain on the shoulders, your body collapses over like this. Do I like to sleep on my back? Psh, that's my go-to place. You know, I also have shoulder problems and um, they're just, doesn't help when I sleep like that. And when I wake up in the night and I realize oh, I'm on my back, oh, I'm on my side again, I go to my back again. Okay. So to sort of take that pressure off my shoulder, holding purses, good Lord, I'm telling you, purses on the same shoulder all the time. It's what we're used to. You're going to swing that baby up there and put it on the shoulder and it's going to cause the stress and the strain and the imbalance in the body. And that can cause a whole lot of problems for you. The other thing is people who cross their legs the same way all the time, same way all the time, that repetitive thing, you know, you always go left over right, never right over left. And that sort of a thing can also cause a problem. Isn't that interesting? How could that be? But it can, it will, the body will fall into this repetition. You'll have more stretched out muscles and less develop on the other side that just comes with some of the ways that we treat our body. Because if you have a propensity to favor one side or the other, when you're sitting, you will favor it when you're walking or climbing stairs or whatever. So there has to be this balance of strength built into it to try and help you per um, improve. The other thing that I want to make sure that you guys realize is I've seen people sit on their legs, whether they have their feet, legs crossed under them, they sit on the floor with their legs sort of in a strange position and they're sitting on them. Um, that's really not an advisable thing. And that's really more, you could get a problem in the knees if you're, if you're, knees are always bent, your legs are always bent in one way, but also you need to be cautious about um, sitting on your legs can cause some problems with, um, oh dear heavens, uh, oh blood clots, there's a possibility of blood clots forming. So you don't want, you don't want to do that and it's not healthy for your joints anyway to have your knee kind of torqued strangely so that you can sit in a chair whether your leg is um, in a chair under you or you're on the floor and you know, so be, so be, just be gentle with yourself. Okay. So the other thing that we want to talk about is um, muscles that overcompensate. Uh, and I'm going to take just one part of your body and um, of your back anyway, and talk about like the, um, the back being too tight. Let's say, in through um, your low back, okay? And so, and everybody complains about a lot of pain. And I just discussed this in my class this morning with everybody and um, what happens in society, we sit so much. Uh, we're sitting at a desk or even if you're retired, you sit to drive, you sit when you get home, you sit for meals, 
you're sitting to watch TV, you're sitting to read a book. And that seated position um, is what is affecting your back. It's not that you lifted wrong, although you could do that too. But it's a matter of the psoas nut muscle. And that word is spelled P-S-O-A-S. And I'm going to give you just a little tiny nutshell version of the psoas muscle. It's responsible in part, um, in a big part, for helping you to walk. It's locomotion, forward locomotion, okay? And that muscle um, goes and starts above your knee, kind of on the inside of your leg. And it goes up through the pelvis, into your body through the pelvis, and attaches in the back at the, at the ribs, at the lowest rib, okay? So, and it might even be on the vertebrae, but it's at the back at that point, okay? So the problem that happens is when you sit down, it shortens. It shortens. It, it's not lengthened out because you're spending so much time in that bent position. So the psoas muscle doesn't have to extend all the way down to where your leg is, your knee is, when you're standing, it can just sort of settle in here where you're seated all the time. So that's shorter. So when you stand up, you're stretching it out and it's pulling on the back. You're not gonna feel it on the leg or the knee, although it could eventually cause some issues with that leg, okay, and with your knee. But the thing that we wanna remember is you need to get up. That's why when you're on a trip, you should get out of the car, walk around a little bit, stretch, stretch that inner thigh. Now it's also known as the hip flexor muscles and, uh, or the groin. People talk about it in that way. There are muscles on top of the psoas muscle. It's a pretty deep muscle. I was getting a um, massage one day and uh, my massage therapist was stretching in my inner thigh and after a bit I felt the muscles release and my legs sort of moved back and I said oh that was was that the psoas releasing she goes oh no it's way deeper than these these are whatever she named the muscles that were there and she said I'll show you what I have to do to get the psoas to stretch I love her dearly she's wonderful so but she was teaching me a good lesson. So in order for her to stretch my psoas correctly, I had to lean over on the table, grab the side of the massage table, drop my leg off the other side that she held, and then she pushed my leg back up, my foot toward my head. I was like a pretzel, but I could feel the stretch very deep inside in my leg, and I could feel it pulling in my back. So. So why, then what do you think? Oh, there's no sense. I'll never stretch it out. You will. You just work with it as best to the best of your ability. Get a little stretch in there and try to just stand up and walk. You know, you're on a trip. You stand up. You get out of the car. You walk around at wherever you are. Move a little bit. Sit. Stretch in through your legs. You know, the one where you put your... Um, ankle on your knee and sort of lean forward to get in your hip area and then also stand up and do the psoas muscle. You'll bo your body will appreciate it when you arrive at your destination and you're not crippled, right? So we don't want to be horrible, you know, feeling horrible. So I want to, let's see, those of you that um, work out on a regular basis. The ones that are in my class have heard me lecture about this because I say it all the time. Um, there are exercises that are kind of contraindicated that they say to do it a certain way and they is the American Care College of Sports Medicine. Um, they're the guys that kind of set the precedent for everything. They're, they're the big honchos. They're the ones that uh, are out there talking specifically exercise science and kinesiology and and all of that so this was years ago they talked about the fact that um, when you're doing um, a straight leg deadlift and of course when I use the word straight leg deadlift it, you know your knees are never locked out they're always slightly bent so that you take the pressure off the knee and it's, um, so that move, the straight leg deadlift, also a bent over row 
it's really imperative that you make sure that when you bend down, you are pivoting, you're moving from the hip, okay? So that your fulcrum is in the hip. So if these are, my, this is my legs here, okay? This is my hip, and then this is my back. The fulcrum should be here. That's when you're, that's where you're bending from. So the pressure all goes into the hips. It'll get the buttocks, the legs will help, will just help to support you and pull you back up. There's a little bit of that erector spine A is working also. However, if you do a deadlift and you curve your back and come back like this, that pressure goes, leaves this area of the hip and goes up into the small back. And that's how you're going to hurt yourself. Okay. So it's always when you're doing straight leg deadlift or you're going to be doing a bent over row where you go down flat back, your instructor will say flat back, make sure you're doing it. And then you're going to pull the weights up of either a barbell or dumbbells. So that's so, so, so important for you to remember. And if you can't feel whether it's flat, the back is flat, Ask somebody to look at it. Now, I suggest there's one thing that you think about before you even bend is that you want to pull your shoulder blades together and stick your chest out. And that pretty much will keep you in that form of having a flat back, okay? I tell my classes, I'm going to put a cup of coffee sitting on your back because it looks just like a tabletop. That's what you want it to look like, nice and flat. And don't bend and roll over because... Physics is physics, and it will change where the pressure is, and it will go into your back, okay, your upper back. Not a good thing. Okay, so the other thing, too, that uh, the American College of Sports Medicine was uh, has talked about is making sure that you're cautious. This is kind of a lap over because it's also shoulder, but it's also back, okay? Um, be cautious when you're doing behind the neck, when you're doing lat pull downs, okay? So you're holding the bar, you're standing in a machine, and it's got a cable on it, and you're pulling down to activate the chest. Old days, we used to put it behind our heads. We'd lean forward, we'd do it behind our heads, and you'd have your hands would have to be back so that you could get the bar behind your head and not crack yourself on the skull, right? Well, American College of Sports Medicine said that that's really not advisable. It's not a great way to do that because for the most part, it puts undue stress on your deltoids and you can hurt your shoulders. Um, and so, you know, being an instructor, I always, you know, if you individually want to do it, knock your socks off, but I will never do it with my clients. The machines now that we use are set up so that you can, they, they, when you pull down, your arms go right here. It's not this behind the head thing. Um, also, when you're doing... Um, push push ups and you're going for shoulder presses the hands are always here even with the ears they're not behind it okay so you don't want to torque your body and get unnatural about it and when we talk about legs i'll go and talk about some things there too that that are really not recommended all righty so you don't want to chair your shoulder and when you're doing your squats even you want to make sure that you are going down and keeping the chest high while you go down and all the pressure is in the butt and the hamstrings, little in the quads and then down into the feet, not in the knees and certainly not in the back. So I, all those little things, I wish I had you here because I'd sit you down or I'd take you to the gym and I'd show you, you know, watch your form and see how we can change it so that you don't hurt yourself. If you don't have, if not here in Missouri, you can't come to me. Try to find somebody that you you respect and somebody that other people have gotten really good, um, really good feedback from and and good results and get a trainer to watch your form and make sure you're okay. All right, very very important. And um, on the trainer route, I want to make sure that uh, years ago the expression came out saying no pain no gain. I want to make sure you understand that expression. Um, back in the day. It was, that's the way, that was just the attitude. When I used to train for bodybuilding and powerlifting and did that heavy, insane lifting, that was the attitude then, too. And I think that we have come along in science, in exercise science, to understand that 
that's really not what we want to do. We don't want to create pain. Um, the muscles will get tired. They will get sore. If you're bodybuilding, you're working to the point where you're really trying to destroy those muscle fibers so that they will either rebuild stronger or build other pathways or more muscle. There's all kinds of controversy about how that really happens to make those muscles grow and get stronger. Bottom line, it's I think it's destructive. If I had it to do over, I probably wouldn't do it today, especially feeling how my body feels from that heavy lifting. But um, what I say is word of caution. Just watch what you're doing and be really careful. Make sure that you are warmed up. Warm up is doing what you're going to do, but slowly. Um, do not stretch to warm up. Stretching happens after you're done, okay? While you're sitting there chilling with your friends, you're stretching, you're drinking some water, you're having a great time, okay? So there you go, guys. This was our April exercise, little blurb on back and back exercises. And I am only interested in you being the very best version of yourself. I think it's important to love your life. In 2018, we're all about a holistic wellness program. So at Life Health More, that's what I'm trying to do. If you have questions, please do me the favor of asking comments. Come on, communicate. I like it. I like having the questions. I like having the challenges. And I really like helping people. So for today, you have a wonderful day. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye now.